Hi, this is Scott Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, and for today's video I'm finally getting back around to that series that I started a couple of months ago on extending the maximum achievable range of your HT. I've done two videos up to this point. The first was an intro. The second uh, really got into probably the most important aspect of extending the maximum achievable range of your radio, and that is an understanding of line of sight FM communications, understanding factors like natural horizon and how to extend that, understanding how to displace and get a better look at the antenna that you're trying to get, you're trying to make contact with. Um, a lot of factors that I talked about there that were critical, and hands down, the the most dramatic impact that you can make on extending your maximum achievable range lies within uh, understanding line of sight communication and understanding natural horizon. And it is not uh, it's not technology. It's not something that you can bolt onto the radio. It's an operating principle. It's a tactic. It's a thing that you do. It's a way that you deploy the radio that can dramatically extend your range without having to bolt anything onto your radio or really make any kind of adjustments to the radio. You just simply operate properly and you're good to go. But admittedly there are some technological approaches that you can take that can add a little bit of extra a uh, little bit of extra distance to that radio uh, but not much. It's not going to be nearly as dramatic as displacing or getting your antenna higher or you and your antenna higher. Uh, but the factors we're going to be looking at moving forward as it relates to what you can do to the radio or bolt onto the radio are mainly going to be related to power and antenna. Now, the, when it comes to HTs, keep in mind throughout this entire series, we are talking about HTs. We are talking about man portable communications that you carry around on your belt or on your plate carrier or attached to your pack. We're not talking mobiles. We're not talking HF rigs. That's a whole different world. And when it comes to HTs, there's only really two factors that come into play, and that is the output power of the radio and the antenna. Those really are the only two things. Now, there are things related to the antenna that take us into all kinds of different directions, and that explains the delay in getting to this next series, because every time I wrote the outline for this video, it it was insane. I had outlines that were going like 20 pages and I realized this can be like an hour, hour and a half long video to even scratch the surface. And to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, particularly when we get to antennas, um, this is the 24th edition of the ARRL uh, antenna book. This is this is a light overview of antenna tech. Now, admittedly, a lot of this does relate to HF communications, but the principles remain the same. There is a lot of science and there is a lot of technology that goes, to ante goes into antennas and goes into um, the design of antennas and why they do what they do. There are terms that just in and of themselves would be a half hour um, video. For instance, I'm going to be talking in a minute about SWR, which is standing wave ratio. I could easily do a standalone video on that that would take up to 30 minutes to sort of explain what SWR is and on and on. So when I got to, to this particular video, which was going to talk about uh, power and antenna and the relation between the two, um, and then breaking down the different types of antennas, I went, wow, this is going to go forever in a day. So I'm basically going to give a very very, very light overview of things. Um, if you're looking for deep tech here, you've come to the wrong place. I'm going to keep it super, super simple. But moving forward, I'm going to be doing a lot of antenna testing. I'm going to be going back over radios that I've reviewed. I'm going to be taking a very in-depth look at the factory antenna. And then I'm going to be digging into my antenna collection and going over a lot of the different antenna options for the radios, some of the better antenna options for the radios, and I'm going to be looking at antennas that I haven't looked at before. I've talked a lot about Comet, Diamond, and Nagoya antennas. There's other brands that I've neglected, such as Signal Stick, Smiley, um, and you name it. And I'm sure there's, there's more that I've neglected to mention. But I'm going to be looking at these antennas, testing them kind of semi or quasi scientifically. Um, real quick side note, another thing that held me back was one thing that I had purchased in order to more effectively do this testing was I got that MFJ849 SWR meter. I talked about it, I believe, in my UV9R Pro video, and I talked about uh, what utter garbage 
that piece of equipment was. I did not heed the warnings about the acronym of MFJ of being mighty fine junk, but man, they are. Uh, um, I'm coming up with another term. Um, uh, the first word is not going to be mighty, it's going to be malicious. Uh, the J is going to stay the same. The F word is going to change to something completely different. Uh, because it turns out, it looks like that MFJ849 killed my VX6. So the series I was doing on the AC VX6 is on suspension because it worked before I hooked it up to the MFJ849. Now it's gorked out and doesn't work. So don't know the factors there, but I think uh, I'm not going to send the 849 back for repair. I think I'm going to take it to the range and end it. Uh, but back to what we're talking about here. So um, aside from the, the tactic of you deploying the radio properly, when it comes to your, your radio and extending the maximum achievable range of it in terms of bolting parts on or making adjustments, uh, there's only two things that you're going to be considering, and that is the output power of the radio and the antenna system that's attached to the radio or that the radio is attached to. Um, when it comes to output power, there's really nothing you can do. Uh, you can put a bigger battery on, but you cannot make this radio output more power than it's already outputting. Yes, you could hook it into an amplifier, but if I'm going to bother with that, I'm going to use a mobile. I'm talking about what you can do with the radio in a pouch on your plate carrier or attached to your pack or on your belt. So output power, you're kind of stuck with what you got. Now, you could start by selecting a radio that has a particularly high output power to begin with. Most, most HTs uh, are stuck in the, in the range of about 5 watts in terms of high. There are some exceptions to that. Uh, one radio that I am going to be doing a review on fairly soon, it's actually a, a re-upload of a review that I did earlier, but that's the, uh, the Ocean KG UV9 Pro, or I'm sorry, UV9 Pro, UV9 Papa. Um, that one is a real barn burner in, in terms of its output. That thing really smokes. I think it was getting like 9 watts um, on, I forget, UHF or VHF. I think it might have been UHF. So that puts out a decent amount of power to begin with, but most of the others are only going to put out 5 watts. And that is 5 watts into a perfect 1 to 1 match dummy load. Now, I have had people chastise me about the SWR tests I do on radios, and they say you should test output power into a dummy load and test SWR on the antenna. That doesn't tell me anything. Um, yeah, knowing the maximum possible output power into a one-to-one -one dummy load is nice to know, but if, it, if that changes the second you put your antenna on and it goes down to a lower level, that's the number I actually want to know, which is why I do my SWR test through an antenna. I, I not only want to know what the SWR is, I also want to know what the output power is on that. And that is because, and that is relating to power. There's nothing you can do to increase your output power, right? You're stuck at 5 watts. But if you have a factory antenna that has a high SWR, that means not all of that output power is getting out of the antenna, and some of it is being reflected back into the receiver. So that means that your radio may be 5 watts into a 1 to 1 dummy load, but through a poor antenna, your output power may only be 4 watts, or your output power may be 2.38 watts, which is one example that I have of a radio that does about 4.8 into, uh, into a dummy load, and it does 2.38 out of an antenna at best. And as soon as you change that antenna, that whole factor changes. And that's going to be some of the testing I'm going to be doing going forward, is showing you what kind of gains you can get. So not only are you talking about getting an antenna that may actually be able to extend the actual range of your signal, when you upgrade to a better antenna, you're also making sure that you're getting as close to possible uh, in terms of getting maximum output power out of that antenna as well. So that's why we pay attention to SWR. But beyond that, there are other factors that come into play that are, that are pretty darn esoteric. And like I say, just explaining SWR and how that works and why it does what it does is a video in and of itself. So I'm going to gloss over that, and I will cover that later in a, in a uh, standalone video. Um, other things that come into play in upgrading your antenna is going to be things like gain. Um, what gain is, and this too is a video in and of itself, but the best way to describe gain is like this. On a typical omnidirectional antenna, the radiation pattern uh, is expressed kind of in terms of like a ball that surrounds the antenna, or think in terms of a donut, a big fluffy donut. So when that signal comes off, it comes off in, in a 
ball shape all the way around the antenna, 360 degrees. There's a hole in the middle, but it goes out 360 degrees in this ever-expanding sphere. In a lot of cases, what's at the top and the bottom of that sphere are unnecessary because it's either going to impact too low or it's going to go into the sky where it's not needed. What's needed is a focusing of that beam, and that's where gain comes into play. So the difference between a, a factory antenna, for instance, and something like this is this is a high gain antenna or high gain it means there's some appreciable gain over no gain at all uh, in this case i believe this is a three uh, three dbi gain antenna and what that means is due to the design of the antenna and again i've got to gloss over this because how this is done is a video in and of itself but instead of having a big lofty ball coming off of that antenna what it does is it flattens it out and i want you to think in terms of a donut so once again and you've got this big fluffy donut that that's sitting there all covered and glazed and you take and just press it down so if you press that donut down it's going to flatten the bottom and the top but what happens with the sides so the donut is right here and you flatten it down as it flattens down it elongates out and it thus stretches the usable signal because you're taking that energy off the top and the bottom and focusing it into the center of the antenna. It extends that range out. Now, how, how much does it extend it out? What is the actual appreciable gain involved? That can differ. It depends. Uh, it definitely depends. I, I've got a test that I did getting ready to do this video at one point before where I did... I had, a, I had, I believe it was the 935 Golf. So I was running a, a test through a repeater and I was looking at an S meter on another radio and out the signal goes and out and I, and I get my signal report back and there was no difference. I was hitting the repeater fine with the factory antenna and the thing is with the high gain antenna, I'm still hitting it fine. I, I saw a little bit of uptick in terms of the S meter uh, in, in terms of what I was getting back, but nothing, no real dramatic improvement. That is until I took a trip. Now, I mentioned that I had made a contact with this radio once before at about 120 miles into the repeater. And what I neglected to mention was the antenna that I had on that was not this antenna. It looked like this antenna, but it wasn't. It was actually a Nagoya NA70 or 771, a ham antenna, but it was on this radio. And I got a decent contact at 121 miles. Not bad at all. I was told that I was readable, um, but there, there was an appreciable amount of static and hiss on the signal. Well, I upgraded uh, that antenna from uh, the, the standard 771 antenna to this one, which is a 771 Golf. Uh, this antenna is specifically designed, rather than being a dual band um, ham antenna that was designed for VHF and UHF, this thing is designed to rock and roll mainly in that band that is occupied by the GMRS range of, of frequencies 462 to 467. And this son of a gun, not only this time was I able to extend my range from 120 or so miles to 131 miles, but the report back was you got a little crackling on your signal, but otherwise you're almost full quieting. That is where the gain starts to come in. That is where using an, an antenna that is, now you hear this term tuned for GMRS. Well, all antennas are tuned. Um, I don't know if you're aware of that or not, but having it tuned for the proper range of frequencies, though, is what made, uh, what made the definitive difference uh, in, in this case. But that gain is can be important. Um, it can also hurt you in terms of repeaters and mobile applications, more on that later. But I will say that in almost every case, upgrading from a factory antenna to a higher gain uh, whip antenna or aftermarket antenna is almost always a good idea. Now, I guess it does beg the question, um, why would Yesu uh, put out an otherwise fine radio and then put an antenna on that's kind of compromised and not that great? Um, I don't know. I, I've never really gotten a straight answer from anybody on that. Other than to say, I think they kind of know that pretty much everybody is going to buy an HT. If they're going to do anything to it, they're going to change out the antenna. So they give you an antenna that'll get the job done. It's not the best antenna in the world, but it'll get it done, and it's a low-cost component for them. 
this component probably even and if you want to know the science or the secret behind this look at the cost of factory antennas versus aftermarket antennas even buying them so if i wanted to buy a uh, a replacement uh, FT60 antenna, I, I think I'm going to spend maybe $12, $13 on the thing. Whereas if I want to upgrade to this antenna, I'm going to spend $28. So when you're talking about a radio that has an MSRP of $150, a $20 antenna upgrade is a significant increase in the retail cost of the radio. And in a lot of cases, this may not even be the antenna people want to upgrade to. Because once they decide to take this antenna off and go their own way, there's any number of different ways they can go. They can go with a, they can go with a, maybe something that's about the same height. Or they could go with something that is a big old whip. Or they could go with something that's a little bitty shorty stubby thing for working around the house or the neighborhood. So, again, I think when it comes to factory HT antennas, they're good to go in terms of they'll get the signal out and they'll get the job done. Not unlike back in the day, way back in the day when I first started shooting and I was into revolvers real heavily. Still am, but... At that time, all revolvers came with grips that did the job of giving you something to hang on to. They would get that done. You did get a revolver that did have grips on it, and you could hold those grips, and you could fire that weapon. And for some people, that's all they ever did. They would run with factory grips on the gun, and they were fine. Just like there's a lot of folks that run with an FT-60 with no thoughts of ever changing out the antenna. They hit all the repeaters they want to hit. They make all the contacts they want to make. Boom, they're fine. They're perfectly happy. It's only those people that want to really push the envelope. They want to have the maximum in all ways, and they want to have top-of-the-line equipment. They're generally going to be the people that are going to upgrade to a better antenna just for that extra little punch that you can get out of it. And that's pretty much what you get. When you put one of these whip antennas on a radio, some people, you got to manage your expectations because in a lot of cases, like I mentioned earlier, had I merely gone off of the experience of, hey, I, I was hitting the repeater fine with, I believe it's this antenna. So I was hitting the repeater just fine with this antenna. I was making contacts pretty good all over the place. Didn't really see a need to upgrade the antenna. Um, upgraded the antenna anyway, and when I made my contacts, I got no real improvement in terms of signal report. Asked for a signal report, guy said, hey, I, I, I gave, him, gave him this signal, or well, this signal report and this signal report, no difference. Guy says, hey, you sound exactly the same. I hear no appreciable difference. If I had used that as my only analogy for the improvement in the antenna, I might have said, well, there's really no, there's really no value to upgrading the antenna. That one's just fine. It wasn't until, like I said, I found out that I not only was I able to get an additional 10 miles out of this antenna in terms of distance, it was clear at that distance. It never really dropped out, in fact, until I got on the other side of a mountain and then I couldn't get any signal out at all. So, uh, again, that's, what's the word I'm searching for here? Um, oh, it's, I, I hate it when I, when I have a, have a, a a word that I'm searching for and it's stuck in it. It would be perfect for the circumstance and situation. Almost kills the video and makes me want to hit the off button. We're going to move move perfectly. Anecdotal. Anecdotal evidence. Yes, anecdotal basically it's, hey, this worked for me. I have no scientific basis for that opinion, but it worked. Um, a lot of my experience with antennas and antenna-related issues are purely anecdotal. I don't have a scientific explanation for it. It just does work. But there is some science we can apply. And moving forward, I'm going to be testing all of these antennas, and I'm going to give you a computer pro or computer generated profile of the antenna. We're going to test them on a meter um, and run them through the whole the whole pace. As I said, I'm going to go back through with each of these factory antenna setups and show you what the factory antenna does and what kind of improvements you can see with other antennas. I won't for every single radio go through every possible antenna out there, but this is just a whoops. This is just a small handful of antennas, and I have another stack over here that I. Could reach towards. I got a lot of antennas to look at. I got a lot of antennas that I have no experience with that I need to look at, but we're going to really dig into antennas 
um, and, and get down to the bottom of that. But I'm verging on going a little long with this video, and I think I'm going to end it at that point. Just to understand that there's really nothing you can do positively to increase your power, but there are some things you can do negatively that can affect your output power, and that upgrading from the rubber duck antenna on your radio, unless otherwise stated, um, upgrading from the rubber duck to an aftermarket antenna is almost always a good choice. And fortunately, there's a lot of good information out there from people that do have anecdotal evidence. And I'm sorry for that, that brain fart I had earlier, but there's a lot of good anecdotal evidence and, and a lot of good suggestions out there. Just go to any average Facebook user group and say, what's a good aftermarket antenna for X radio? And immediately you're going to have nine, nine different options thrown at you right in your face. Ah, I like the Nagoya. I like the Smiley. I like the Signal Stick. I like the Comet. I like the Diamond. To be honest with you, you kind of can't go wrong with any of them. Uh, pretty much any of them are going to give you some appreciable increase in performance. There's no antennas, well, let me rephrase that. Sometimes you come across some antennas that are absolutely, you go, okay, this is alien technology here. This is one, for instance. This is the, uh, the, the I think it's the 320H. I don't know, I'd have to put the reading glasses on. Let me throw those on for a second. Yeah, this is the SRH 320 Alpha for the uh, Yaesu VX6. This is one antenna and probably the most dramatic increase I, I've ever seen uh, in bolting a, an aftermarket antenna onto a radio. I put this on my VX6 and it literally became a different radio overnight. Uh, it's just amazing. Only downside, absolutely fragile as hell. Um, but more on that later. Another thing we're going to be talking about um, in great degree is other things that you can do with antenna technology to extend the range on HTs. I just did some interesting testing with that uh, that Yagi directional antenna that I've shown in the other two videos. And I was able to, and, and I'll show the video later, but with this 935 Golf again, uh, at a recent little field day event that we did, not full field day, but we do a, a kind of a mock field day prepping for winter and summer field day. So we were doing this this past weekend. And I had this thing um, going through that little Yagi directional antenna. I was hitting our repeater at 38 miles, pretty much full quieting, half a watt. So that's kind of interesting when we're talking about in terms of gain and taking rather than just flattening that donut down, but instead flattening it down, mashing the sides bumping the back and then pointing it in a direction. You'd be amazed what you can do with the directional Yagi antenna. I'm going to also talk about how much distance you can, uh, or how much uh, uh, increase in maximum achievable range you can get by going onto a roof-mounted antenna, for instance, something on a mast, and then, of course, mag mounts for vehicles. So I'm going to kind of end the series as it sits right now, understanding this is three parameters, um, position, power, and antenna. Those are basically the three things to focus on and achieve expanding your maximum achievable range. And moving forward, I'm not going to keep it within a series. I'm just going to start doing a lot of antenna tests. Also, going to be testing a lot of other accessories like speaker mics and things of that nature. But I've gone on long enough on this video. I want to thank you for watching and or listening and look for a lot more information coming out in terms of antennas for HTs and also other antenna options for HTs. So with that, Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. This is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee from Southwest Visalia, California. Take it easy.